In watching The Conjuring 2, it became apparent to me very quickly that James Wan and company have actually accomplished something quite amazing in that essentially they've, they've cracked the code in, in making a, a successful ongoing horror franchise, uh, not only a continuing series, but an anthology series in the fact that uh, we, we have these characters, the Warrens, uh, played by Patrick Wilson and, and Vera Farmiga, who are essentially the stars uh, of these stories. They're paranormal investigators and debunkers who uh, go case per case, basically. So each movie can be a new case. So in that sense, it can still be a continuing story of the Warrens, but we have a brand new story surrounding them, essentially. So, I mean, it really comes off as a, as a success where others may fail so miserably in like trying to continue a story with that brand name recognition of say something like, you know uh, paranormal activity with insidious they, they kind of have to continue a certain story with a certain type of demon or spirit or, or what have you over and over and as the movies go on it dilutes more and more and becomes less profitable here they can do just about anything i mean obviously they have to keep to a paranormal kind of thing but all these ghost movies they're kind of the same anyway so as long as we have those characters that we recognize with each movie it can continue as, as long as it needs to and in these two characters they can be as large or as small as a part in the series with each movie as they need to be they could occupy 10 minutes they could occupy half the movie it doesn't really matter as long as they're kind of involved in some way that way we can kind of shift focus to the central family or those being in need of help uh, from spiritual and demons kind of stuff uh, with each movie. So it's kind of a brilliant thing. And uh, I mean, it, it took, took this long to really kind of hone it in. So they can make any number of these movies. They can make this series forever, basically. And it, it's brilliant not only in that, but in, in like the release date, we have a peak summer release, get a big theatrical uh, box office intake. Then guess what? October time, near Halloween, home video, cha-ching! So uh, it, it's it's really kind of a brilliant strategy in, in making these movies. And, I mean, James Wan, I'll, I'll, I'll give him credit for, for being a master of creating a, a scary scene. And even though it's something like The First Conjuring, which... I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll say I think it's, it's a little bit overpraised of a movie. And the thing about it is... While the, there are individual scenes that, that stand out exceptionally, that have great scares and are composed with, with such authority for, from James Wan and with such uh, an exact science to creating these scares that, that are really, really impressive, they're, they're almost interchangeable, you know? And you kind of step away from it, like not being able to distinguish one scary scene for, from another movie or what have you. And it's an externally scary movie, I, I would say where I think some of the best horror movies, they kind of uh, scare you internally, psychologically, maybe make a, a safe place feel unsafe. You know, like The Exorcist, I mean, obviously that's touted as, as one of the, the scariest movies ever. Kind of scares you underneath your skin a little bit. Even even like Jaws, like scared to go in the water, that's it. So here, I mean, they, they know what they're doing in a very kind of scientific kind of sense, if you, if you want to put it that way. We have to make it in this scary old farmhouse. We have to have a scary little doll that looks creepy and, and things like that. So uh, when you step back and look kind of the characters in the story, you're like, well, I mean, this isn't all too satisfying. The movie kind of juggles a whole bunch of characters. We have very obvious comic reliefs here and nothing that really lasts except for those individual scary scenes, right? So it's almost equivalent to uh, going into a haunted house, right? You get scared, you get your thrill, you walk out, and, and that's pretty much it. And, and that's fine if that's kind of all you want from the movie, but I would just say, you know, I, I wouldn't, like, elate it to being, like, a masterful horror classic of, of, of the decade or anything like that. And the same can be said with the second movie, The Conjuring 2, Destination London. Um, it's, it's about more or less the same. I say it's a lesser movie, but not particularly by much. I mean, uh, again, with the formula, we kind of have an opening scene with the Warrens. It's not so much related to the overall story. Uh, kind of almost like, like an Indiana Jones uh, kind of thing. He has an adventure at the beginning, and then, you know, it sets kind of the tone for the rest of the movie. Here, they're kind of looking at the, the Amityville house, and there's an encounter with this demonic uh, nun thing, which is taking the form of this creepy-looking nun. Uh, 
the Bear for Omega uh, character has, has uh, gone as close to hell as she wants to be, and uh, that's uh, kind of setting the stage for the, the, the conflict of, of the overall story of the film, then it's kind of like, okay, well, what's next for us? What, what's next? And it's like, this is a true story of the Warrens, and they're craziest, creepiest, scariest, most demonically horrible case yet. Cuts to montage of the streets of London, the Clashes, uh, London Calling is playing, and it's like, okay, that's kind of the most, like, uncreative thing to do. It's like, you know, like, when, like, a 90s sitcom is like, let's go to Vegas, then they show, like, the Vegas streets, like, Viva Las Vegas, playing in the background, kind of like that. So, I don't know, florals for spring, groundbreaking, but, yeah, what have you. So, we have a focus on this uh, British family who's uh, haunted by a, a British ghost, and, and that may be kind of where the movie may kind of draw a line in the sand where it really kind of depends on, on what you find scary personally. Uh, again, much like with the first film, there are scenes that are indeed uh, constructed in a, in a very scary way. It really gets the job done in, in creating that mood, that atmosphere. Uh, other scenes, though, I mean, I don't quite think it as, as scary as you know it could be. I don't know. Maybe there's just something about like a, a ghost with a cockney chimney sweep accent as as that scary possessing a little girl like it's a girl with this cockney british man's voice it's like i'm gonna get you i am it's like that's not really that scary to me it's kind of silly but that that's all kind of the least of, of the movie's worries where it kind of brings us to the overall plot which is it's 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 ridiculous it's stupid and i guess i'll have to warn spoilers going in so what we learn in this movie, this de demonic nun, uh, not so much unrelated, no, it's, it's actually a big part of, of this movie where it's really the force pulling the strings and it's really just using this cockney ghost and this other ghost, the crooked man uh, ghost that's, that's seen in the film as as like a patsy, right? So he's like Oswald, man, he, he's, he's just a pawn in this bigger game and apparently this demon, for whatever reason, it has a vendetta against the Warrens. So whether it has this grand plan that particularly, specifically, depends on them going to London and them doing the research and them debunking is a little unclear, but it would seem that it is. So they go and, you know, there's a whole thing about how we find out that possibly the daughter is just faking this whole thing. And meanwhile, the ghost is telling her, I'll kill your fucking family if you, if you don't do this and things like that. So she's kind of caught on tape and being essentially a fraud and, and kind of the newspapers get a hold of the movie and or get a hold of the story and, and they expose her as a fraud and things like that and it would seem this is all part of <laughs> the demon's plan where it's like okay if if these people are exposed as fraud i i have free free reign to play as, as much as i want that way they'll leave me alone and for whatever reason the warrens had to do it but then when you think about this plan and using these other ghosts as patsies as, as pawns in the game you kind of think well uh, th wh what this demon is doing it's 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 appearing in in vera from from his dreams and for some reason it's dropping hints to defeat it right so uh, apparently you can defeat this demon just by saying its name I don't recall the name of this demon uh but that's the key that's how you defeat it which one is kind of a little silly because I mean it kind of puts like all the effort in like the exorcism of the first movie to 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 shame. It's like, well, we could have just said its name, huh? Um, so I mean, there's that. It's it's a weird. Uh, does this apply to all demons or just a specific demon? I don't know. But also, it it uh, offers this suggestion in one of these uh, visions that Vera Farmiga has. It's like, well, why would you do that? Why would you, like, offer this riddle <laughs> that holds the key to defeating the demon? Uh, also, why, them being the paranormal experts that they are, wouldn't they already, like, know that or something like that? And it's like, I don't know. It's it's kind of stupid. And, I don't know, it's just this ridiculous plot that's that's way more complicated than it should be. But I guess they're trying to spice it up a little bit than just, you know, pop up and go boom movie, which it is anyway, so maybe they should just, just embrace it. Focus a little bit more on the characters. Focus a little bit more on, you know, the family drama, I guess, which I, I think they do to a fair effect here, but it's kind of overshadowed by the scares, which essentially it has to be. And it, it's pretty much like the same old kind of stuff that we see. There are very effectively creepy scenes. There's good stuff in the movie, but... 
I don't know. It's I would say it's it's a lesser movie than the first. And f for what it's worth, I, I do like the Warrens. I think they're good characters. I, I like the aspect of Vera Farmiga uh, having not only these these visions about the demonic evil nun thing, but a vision of Patrick Wilson's death, where she's very reluctant to go on this kind of mission with him where she's like well, I can't lose you you know and, and you, you see the conflict in, in her with every scene so I mean there's a good relationship there and I would say the series it simply has room for improvement if they're going to make new ones if they're going to kind of do this serial kind of thing this uh, anthology kind of thing where there's a new case with each movie I'm open to it. Like I, I, I didn't like the movie that much. I, you know, I thought there were too many ridiculous things, and not that scary. I didn't think the the Cockney goes is scary. I didn't think the 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 Crooked Man was all that scary. In fact, it's kind of ridiculous seeing this like Tim Burtony uh, stop motion almost looking kind of thing terrorize these people. And, you know, whatever. But uh, I, I'm open to more because I think it is an exciting prospect to to continue this type of series in the way that they've established here so there's always going to be a potential new case for them to investigate which which i think is cool so i mean this is hardly a rave review but uh one i have tremendous respect for james wan and how he can so expertly uh, create a scary scene and a scary atmosphere and deliver external scares like nothing that's going to get under your skin too much but he he's very good at that craft and i think just whatever uh, writers he employs he needs to to uh ha have them kind of hone in the craft a little bit more a little bit more room for improvement there uh, i mean I'm, I'm sure at this point james wan could turn a shitty script into a scary movie which you could, you could argue he has here uh, so there's that so it's not that it's not scary in some parts it's just you know, the writing's a little shitty, that's all. And uh, I, whether he continues to do, do the movies or not, uh, I'm, I'm sure he can Im employ other directors as well. So this is a series with a limitless potential, which it's a very exciting thing. And, you know, I like to see horror movies thrive. So, I don't know. Well, I, I, I know these Conjuring movies, they're very o overpraised and things like that, but I don't hate them. I just think the best Conjuring chapter has not been written yet it's my opinion so thank you very much for watching be sure to comment rate subscribe all that good stuff it's 31 days of horror plenty more scary movies to review so stay tuned for that and stay scared